So in this video, we're talking about a more advanced type of inheritance. What if we're studying the inheritance of two traits at the same time? So uh, we're always going to assume in our course here that the two genes are located on different chromosome pairs. If they're located on the same chromosome pair, the inheritance becomes even more complex, but we'll wait till you take some more genetics courses and before we discuss that. So um, what if we're looking at say the B and the T genes that are on different pairs as shown here? Well, we need to think about what happens during meiosis in order to think about how uh, these alleles might be passed on to gametes. We recall that in the first step, we duplicate our chromosomes, then we line them up side by side. Maybe one such lineup would result in them lining up like this. If we split apart the pairs in the first division and then split apart the X copies in the second division, we notice that, that, that we might pass on um, the dominant alleles together um, in some of our gametes and the recessive alleles together in some of our gametes. But remember that we could also, if another cell were to go through the same process, maybe in the lineup they would line up this way. Uh, we call that independent assortment. And maybe when they split um, uh, the pairs and then the X copies, we could just as easily have a dominant B uh, be paired with a recessive T in a set of gametes. And so what we're really trying to show here is that if an organism has this initial genotype, and we're just kind of going back to just using our letters here, because um, uh, these genes will always be on the autosomes as well of organisms, then uh, what we see in the gametes is maybe two letters, half of what we started with, and importantly, um, one of each type of chromosome, or for our uh, purposes here, a B and a T. So we could have the big, uh, the two dominant alleles together, a dominant with a recessive, uh, the other recessive with the other dominant, or both recessive. Um, if we were to think about maybe a different type of organism, maybe if they're doubly homozygous recessive, then their chromosomes might look like this. And what if we were to go through the process again? Du uh, duplicate everything, line them up side by side, split the pairs, then split the X copies, I hope you kind of notice that really there's only one result that you can get no matter what, and that's little b with little t. And so it's going to be really important to think about how you make your gametes, and that'll help you determine how big of a Punnett diagram you make. Because let's say that that was our two parents for a particular cross, then uh, if we just list all four gametes that one parent could make, and the single gamete that other parent could make, then we, that'll tell us to build a one by four diagram, and then we can combine our gametes to show the possible offspring. Generally, when combining your gametes, I would keep your, your Bs together and your Ts together. So maybe you kind of write it out like this. So big B, little B, little T, little T for the next offspring, and so on. And then uh, ultimately, you can um, uh, answer the question that you're asked in particular. Uh, the one thing I'll highlight, and I'll show you kind of the, the, the wrong thing that students do in, in just on the next slide, make sure your offspring have the same number of letters that your parents started with. Um, if your parents started with four, I really hope your offspring will end up with four as well. So the most common mistake I see sometimes when students try to do these problems is they just think that you're just lining up letters on the top and the sides, and so they'll take their four letter parents and they'll do this. But I hope you very quickly see that this is just a disaster inside. Uh, we have uh, Bs but no Ts for some of these offspring, and we have Ts but no Bs for some of these offspring. Um, that just isn't gonna work. So um, please make sure you don't do this. Uh, so again, you're not just loading uh, letters on the top and the sides, you're really showing all of the different possible gametes. And so a quick rule for helping you think about uh, making your gametes in two trait problems is that gametes should always have half of what we started with in a diploid cell. So if you start with four letters of some kind, you'd better end up with two in your gametes. And you need one of each. Um, so if you had Bs and Ts, you'd better end up with a B and a T in your gametes. So let's practice that maybe before we practice full length problems. Um, what if you determined that your original parents had these in their diploid cells, um, then what would their gametes end up being? Well, um, again, we need half of what we start with, so two total letters, and we need some kind of G and some kind of N. 
Well, I hope you can imagine that maybe both of them are uppercase. The other possibility is that one of them is lowercase, the G, um, because all this parent has is uppercase N's to pass on. This uh, uh, parent here starts off with four letters, so once again we'll want two in our gametes, and I hope you can see that really all they have to pass on is a, is a dominant F and a lowercase r. Um, so that's the only gamete they can make. And this parent, because they have uh, are heterozygous for both genes, can really make all four gametes. So a capital for both, um, a capital for the E's, but a lowercase a, a lowercase e, and a capital A, and a lowercase e, and a lowercase a. So you'll see that parents can either have, uh, either uh, produce either four, uh, two, or one gamete um, when you kind of do these types of problems. So let's see if we can do a full workup of two problems to finish this video. Uh, what if purple stem color is dominant over green stem color? So let me maybe just use the letter R for our stem color gene here. And uh, maybe the dominant allele is the dominant trait, which is purple uh, stems here. And then the recessive would be green stems. And we also have tall height dominant over short height. So maybe the uppercase letter is tall and the lowercase letter is short. Okay, let's move on. I think I kept my legend um, uh, on the next slide here. So let's say that one parent is homozygous dominant for stem color, but is short in height. So four total letters here, two traits. Uh, homozygous dominant would be both dominant uppercase letters for that uh, stem color gene. And if they're short, then they have to be homozygous recessive for that. Okay, and the other parent it says is heterozygous for both traits. Heterozygous means different, so they have both different letters for both genes. So that would be their four letter combination. Let's think about the gametes that these parents can make. Remember that gametes need half of what you start with and one of each letter. So in this case, we need um, some kind of R and some kind of T. So this parent can only pass on a big R and a little T, whereas this parent can really pass on all four possibilities, big and big, big and small, small and big, and um, small and small. So we're gonna need to make a one by four Punnett square here. Okay, so what if this is my um, uh, parent here who can only make this one gamete? And then let's put my doubly uh, heterozygous parent. Let's see here, let me erase that. Okay, so doubly heterozygous parent up here. And all of the different gametes that they could make. Okay, and let's make our one by four diagram. And then we can combine our gametes. Generally, I like to keep my R's together and my T's together, just like I did in my parents. It doesn't really matter how you write this as long as you look at it correctly. So let me combine these. Usually I put my uppercase letters first as well, although again, that doesn't particularly matter. So let's look to see what I'm asked, being asked to find here. I'm looking for possible offspring who are purple in stem color and tall. So those are both the dominant traits, so I need to find an offspring who at least has A capital R and A capital T. Um, that looks like it's the case here. Um, this uh, offspring, how, this possible offspring, um, it will be short though, so not that one. Um, this offspring shows that, and this offspring also show, shows being short, so not that one. So it looks like I have a two and four chance, or one half, or 50% chance of having that offspring with every offspring I produce. Okay, let's work another problem. What if red, uh, looks like we're going to fruit flies here now. What if red eyes are dominant over black eye color? So let's use maybe R's um, again, and maybe uh, the uppercase is the, uh, is the dominant trait, probably should have written red there, um, and the lowercase is the recessive trait, so black eye color. Okay, and then normal wings are dominant over missing wings. Maybe I'll use N's for that. So the capital N is the normal wings, and the lowercase is the missing wings. So always make your legend first, always write this down, because that'll help you later. I got put this on the next slide. Uh, so let's say that one parent's homozygous recessive for eyes and homozygous dominant for wings. So four letters. Uh, homozygous recessive for eyes means both little r's. Homozygous dominant means both uppercase n's for wings. 
Uh, let's say that this parent is doubly homozygous recessive, so that means that they're a uh, lowercase for both genes. All right, let's think about what gametes they can make. You need half of what you start with and one of each letter. I need an R and an N in each one of my gametes. So this parent can only pass on little r, little n. As it turns out, this parent can only pass on little r, little n. So each one of them can only make one gamete, which means that really we're just going to make a one by one Punnett square here. Nice and easy. So let's maybe put that one parent who is homozygous dominant for wings on the side here with the one gamete they can make. And let's put this parent who is doubly recessive up here with this one gamete they can make. All I need is a one by one Punnett square, how nice. And then maybe keep your R's and your N's together. All right, so that's that has to be the offspring that I make. And we're looking for um, offspring who have black eyes and normal wings. Um, if I'm looking for black eyes, I need both lowercase r's. If I'm looking for normal wings, I'm looking for at least one capital N. Both lowercase r's and at least one capital N. Um, as it turns out, all the offspring will look that way, and that's the, the type that I'm looking for. So 100% of the flies will look that way.